Hey everyone, it's Lindsay from Therapeutic Recreation. This week's theme is celebrating my community, so I thought I'd bring in a special guest for you all. His name is Second Lieutenant White, and he's going to let me interview him, and then he's going to give us a sneak peek at some police equipment. So let's get this interview started. Okay, so today with me I have Second Lieutenant White. Thank you for joining me, or for joining us, I should say. Um, oh, you bet. We just have a couple of questions for you. Uh, I guess we'll just start with the basics. What is your job title and what do you do? So currently I am assigned to our Planning and Research Bureau and my role there is to assist in developing policies for the department. And uh, essentially that means uh, all of our officers and our employees in general, like most people, have to uh, follow guidelines um, they're called general orders or standard operating procedures, and it gives guidance to all of the employees on, uh, you know, how they do their job and, and the expectations. So my role is to help develop uh, those policies. That's awesome. We see that there is a need for policies and procedures in everyday life. So you're definitely needed in your position, it yeah, sounds like. Yes. Yep. <laughs> awesome. So what did you want to be growing up? Well, uh, I had uh, many ambitions uh, like most kids do, and, and for probably longer than I should have, I thought I was going to be an NBA basketball player. Uh, I love sports, and like most kids, wanted to be an athlete growing up, but also considered, like many do, uh, being an astronaut or even the president of the United States. Um, okay, lots of different yeah, pretty professions. Big, yeah, <laughs> all over the place. But I think, um, you know, it's... Uh, uh, was what most kids do and, and those ambitions um, and ultimately resulted in um, a career in law enforcement, which I'm very pleased to, to be a part of. That's great. So how did you go from wanting to be a, an NBA player and an astronaut to becoming a police officer? Yeah, well, uh, it was shortly after I graduated college and still trying to figure out what it is uh, I wanted to do. I befriended a, a, a person who was a police officer and you know, learning about what uh, he did every day and the impact he had in his community and uh, just the job in general and, and um, the exciting parts of the job. But uh, more importantly, those um, impactful moments they had, it, it really resonated with me. And uh, I felt uh, a calling to that shortly thereafter and, and gave it a shot. And 17 years later, I'm still having a ton of fun. Nice. That's really awesome. I like how you were able to utilize the people around you. And I, I heard you mention college. Um, so can you tell us what, uh, what did you study in college? Where did you go? Sure. So I went to uh, and graduated from Radford University and I uh, majored in communications. So kind of a broad um, uh, degree that kind of, I think, uh, has been very helpful in my line of work given um, you know, the contact we have with people and and uh, how often we do have to communicate, but um, was not uh, uh, focused on criminal justice um, or anything like that, which is, um, it's good to, to highlight that because uh, to be a police officer, if anybody ever considered, they, they you don't have to have specific degrees um, in certain things, but uh, it was in uh, communications and it's proven to be very helpful in my line of work. Nice. I like how you did highlight that there's no specific degree. I think a lot of teens may go into college or think about college not really knowing what they want to study and just kind of following their passion. And I think with that, it allows the freedom to pick and choose along the way. And so that's really awesome how you were able to take a communications degree and take those skills and apply it to what you do in your, um, your, your job. I think that's awesome. Yeah, if I can say real quick, Lindsay, it's, it's very helpful because if you if someone does want to be a police officer, and maybe we'll touch on it later, but there's an academy that you go to, and uh, um, uh, Fairfax County, for example, allows uh, has its own academy, which will train you on those specific state required uh, and county required uh, things that uh, you need to know to be a police officer. But it's uh, a great opportunity to bring in people from all types of backgrounds um, and experiences. Um, that are then focused on those things. So it's, um, you're, you're not uh, in any way hindered by um, what type of degree you have, or quite frankly, if you have one or not in many instances. Nice, thanks for that reference. We're actually gonna put some resources at the end of this video that can help connect teens uh, with that information if they are interested in that. So I appreciate that a lot. Right, you bet. 
Um, so obviously, the world has been um, shaken since the uh, since COVID nineteen happened, and so I'm wondering how has your job been impacted by COVID nineteen? Yeah, uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, COVID nineteen has not, um, you know, spared anybody in, in in how they work and what they do, and so. Uh, for law enforcement, it's it's changed in a, in a sense where we are obviously taking our safety and the safety of those that we serve um, very seriously and, and uh, at the forefront of, of what we do. So in many instances where the police officers might come and have closer interaction with somebody, whether it be just taking a report or speaking with them, we found other ways to be effective, one of which is to uh, increase the number of people that we can uh, take phone calls and take those reports over the phone or allow uh, community members to log into the internet and place a report that way. Uh, we certainly still provide all the essential law enforcement services and officers are utilizing personal protective equipment, you know, face masks, things like that, um, to uh, ensure that we're doing everything we can to keep everybody safe. But uh, really just uh, adapting to, to what's been um, put in front of us to ensure that we can still um, provide those essential law enforcement uh, services. Yeah, well, I would like to say thank you. Um, you know, we all depend on everyone in our community, including our police officers. And so it's great to hear that um, there have been accommodations made to make sure that we're safe in our households, but also safe from um, the pandemic as well. So that's really assuring to hear that there have been measures put in place. Yeah, yeah. So I guess leading on to that, do you have any idea of how your job would look in the future? I mean, yeah, there's COVID-19, but also we've seen technology and the things that it can do in the past six months, and it's been pretty incredible. So just have any idea? Well, I, I, this, yes and no. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I will tell you, I, I love uh, technology and, and embrace it as, as many of us in law enforcement do. And um, I'm very excited to see how this does change or just in general. And, I, and you know, things have changed in, in just the past 10 years um, with how we do, uh, how we conduct law enforcement and, and the resources available to us. You know, it wasn't too long ago where uh, officers did not have things like body worn cameras or, or uh, some of the things I think um, uh, you'll allude to a little bit later in this conversation, but I uh, have some pretty cool things I wanna show you guys. Um, if you have the time, and you'll see that uh, one of the things that we do in law enforcement is um, make those adjustments, and we adapt to um, new technology, uh, and we harness it and, and help. Um, and so uh, this conversation we're having now, you know, is mm -hmm. typically done in an in-person fashion. So yeah. I'm sure there's things that uh, will um, allow officers to video teleconferencing and, mm -hmm. and many other things. And uh, uh, I can say that we embrace those things and we look forward to using them. And, um, you know, uh, a lot of the core things we do will stay the same, but I think um, anything we can do to improve it is going to be um, a plus in my book. I think so too. And I'm just wondering how many new policies and procedures you'll have to <laughs> rewrite or review with the introduction or I guess um, more implementation of technology and all those other great things that you were telling me about. You'll probably be busy at work at some point. Yes, huh? yes. Yeah, we're, well, we're, yeah, constantly staying busy. But yeah, as this stuff happens, it's, it's really a, a neat opportunity. But in, in someone in my position to be kind of on the forefront of it is, is pretty special as well. It is. It is. That's awesome. Now, um, what do you think is the most rewarding part about being a police officer? You've touched on so many different things that make you happy and so many ways that you've impacted the community, but are you able maybe to just point out one or two things? Yeah, so I think for me, it's, it's really just uh, the human interaction. And so while some of that might change in, in the conversation we're having today, but for me personally, I've often uh, enjoyed meeting new people, talking to new people, and helping people. So uh, those are the two uh, most uh, rewarding and uh, things that I enjoy doing the most. I, I uh, don't want to sit behind the desk all day if I don't have to. I want to get out and meet people, and part of law enforcement is serving the community and uh, getting to know them. And, and to be able to help people and, and walk away knowing that you contributed um, to uh, helping somebody in need um, is really a gratifying uh, feeling. I agree. 
I agree with that. That's awesome. Um, now, I know that you briefly touched on this before with the academy and what you can study in college, but do you have any other advice that you could give a teen who's maybe interested in becoming a police officer? Well, I, I would love to because uh, if there are teens uh, watching this who already have uh, some interest in it, then um, that's awesome because you're already a step ahead of where I was um, <laughs> when, when I was your age. So um, really, uh, some of the things you really want to do is, is, is talk to people and um, learn about the profession. And, and honestly, uh, I know it's not maybe the best time, but if you have an opportunity or maybe when um, COVID is is um, a little less um, uh, you know, out there as it is now, feel free to walk right into one of Fairfax County Police Department stations. We have eight district mm -hmm. stations and you could just walk right in there and, 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 and ask away, ask as many questions. We have officers on the department whose job is to liaison with the community and really talk to you. We have a lot of other resources um, for uh, teens um, you know, that get them to our police academy and, and function in different ways. And so uh, really just, um, getting out and speaking to people mm -hmm. also education knowledge is power right so if if, if you're high school and i know many high schools in fairfax county do offer criminal justice classes so you know um learning about it and and ruling it out as a possibility or ruling it in are just as important so mm -hmm. you know if you have an opportunity to take an elective it probably is in your high school then i encourage you to do it because it'll either strengthen your desire to be a police officer or learn about it um, or it'll uh, maybe highlight things that, that you know weren't interesting to you. Um, and uh, first, and or I guess underlining all of that is uh, officers are expected to um, you know uh, have integrity and 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 be you know those representatives. And so just listening um, to uh, your parents and and following laws and rules and and all of those things are are going to uh, allow you to. Uh, be a more, uh, you know, productive member of society in general, but certainly would uh, something that uh, a please place like Fairfax County would love to have uh, anybody like that. That's awesome. Yeah, I think we're really fortunate to either live in or around Fairfax County um, because we do have a lot of resources, a lot of options, like you said, eight um, different stations. So there are things out there and you just have to reach out like you said speak out take that initiative to learn more so that's all great advice thanks yeah you bet police officers love to talk about what they do so if you even find one on the street if you find me yeah, yeah i'll just talk talk a year off but it's it's uh it's a wonderful profession and and um you know i encourage anybody out there to just learn more about it so they can get more educated about it nice yeah well um i want to thank you for your time today um, and I asked a little favor of you. Do you want to kind of give them a little sneak peek as to what's about to come next? Yeah, so I took a, a little bit of time to uh, put together a little um, uh, video for you guys or some footage of, of some things I think that you'll find interesting and, and things I love most about police work. So if you have some time, let's take a look. All right, thanks again, Second Lieutenant White, and uh, let's go take a look, guys. Awesome, let's do it. Good afternoon. I'm 2nd Lieutenant Kevin White with the Fairfax County Police Department, and I'm here to show you a few tools that we use on a daily basis. The first is a Fairfax County Police Cruiser, and the second is a bicycle that we use in our neighborhood patrol unit. Why don't you come take a look? So a police cruiser. What you see behind me is not what you're used to when you see a police cruiser. It is the department's new utility cruiser. It's larger and has all the same capabilities as your traditional four-door police cruiser does. But one important thing is it has more room. And that is important because police officers use this as their mobile office. So welcome to a Fairfax County Police Officer's mobile office. Inside this cruiser, there are three important things for the officer every day. The first is their computer, the second is their radio, and the third is their lights and sirens. The computer allows officers to receive information, kind of like of an instant messaging or emailing. The radio is the fastest and easiest way for officers to communicate to one another. And lastly, lights and sirens. Lights you can see and sirens you can hear, and they allow officers to communicate to everybody when there's an emergency. 
Okay, now let's take a closer look at one of our police bicycles. This is one of my favorite tools. This bike is designed to get officers out of their cruiser and into your neighborhoods and build stronger relationships with our community. So what makes a bicycle a police bicycle? That's a great question. First and foremost, they're built stronger to last longer. These bikes are ridden every day and they're ridden everywhere. They also have a light on the front for officers when they're riding at night and they have this pouch on the back which has all the essential equipment an officer will need during their shift. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's video. I really enjoyed being your community special guest. I hope you enjoyed the interview and the tour. Stay on for a few more minutes to find out some resources available to you to get your law enforcement career started. Have a safe and nice summer.